Welcome to this episode of Decaf. We've got a special pairing here. <laughs> Taylor, if you listen to last week, is off doing wedding stuff for her sister. So I'm filling in as MC. I'm Ron, the director of policy here. And filling in for Mark, we have Beacon's executive vice president and my boss. So I have to be on my best behavior, <laughs> Stephanie. Stephanie, welcome to the show. Hello. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I don't know what episode it is, but we're just going to say it is the best episode. That's what we'll just label it on Facebook and the other socials. Yeah, we're just here to fill in. Absolutely. So, uh, Stephanie, last week was Thanksgiving. I don't know about you, but I'm still full from my like three (laughs) slices of apple pie, you know, a week ago. Um, But tell me, how was your how was your Thanksgiving? What'd you do? Where'd you go? Give me the rundown. We were really, um, we were really excited because, you know, we have two kids now. So Molly is four months old and Robert is uh, 20 months. They're 22 months now, 22 months old. Um, And so he's really getting into the holidays, which is kind of fun. And Christmas is going to be really fun with him this year. Um, But we just went to my parents' house uh, in Mount Juliet and enjoyed some Thanksgiving and some family time. And then uh, we actually took them bowling the next day um, and it was Robert's first time bowling and he absolutely loved it. That's awesome. Did Robert seem to have like a favorite Thanksgiving food? Was there something you, you know, like (laughs) start to gravitate towards something? Robert loves all food, but he especially uh, is now getting to the age where like he can tell the difference between like sweet and savory. And Mm -hmm. so um, he was much more interested than he's ever been in the dessert course. Of- oh. And at grandma's house, everything's on the table. You know, nothing's off limits. So hey, there you go. I'm I'm personally, uh, you know, my favorite is the sweet potato casserole. So, you know, you yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not the, I don't like the marshmallows. You know, some people like the marshmallows on the sweet. Yeah. I just want the crunchy, like straight brown sugar, you know. <laughs> And then you've got the 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 potatoes underneath it. So, Sounds like dessert. Oh, it really is, but it, it doesn't count as dessert. That's what I love about it. It's it's sweet in a meal of savory, and then you can not feel bad about having pie afterwards. So Absolutely. that's that's why I like I like the sweet potatoes. Uh, so what did does Molly did she have get to have any Thanksgiving food? I don't know. I don't know. I know nothing about kid so it's like is she too young for that stuff yeah I don't know tell me how that yeah, works she's too young um but actually I just took her to the pediatrician yesterday and got the all clear to start some solid foods with her so she is going to be excited at Christmas time to get to finally be at the table with us awesome that's cool so didn't have to go far though because I'm imagining travel you know is tough with- oh, I didn't want to be anywhere on the roads at all <laughs> Thanksgiving travel so I can I can relate to that. So we went up to uh, uh, Kristen's family, my wife's family. Her mom and stepdad live in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So not the craziest drive, but it's still like a solid seven hours plus the time wow. change. I thought yeah. it was a little bit closer than that. No, and in that stretch from Indianapolis to Fort Wayne is just the most boring, like just you know it's straight Midwest. What you think of flat, nothing going on. So yeah. you know, that's rough, but the big thing for me is so it's a huge gathering just from our family because you've got her mom and uh, Kristen us her younger brother her mom and stepdad and then the stepdad has three daughters two of which are married the oldest has uh, a toddler but then the middle one has two 90 pound dogs that oh they lost. and then the youngest also just got a dog who's about 45 pounds so (laughs) you have like 11 people and then three massive dogs all in one house so I feel like it's almost like home alone you know (laughs) running around all this kind of stuff (laughs) yes I mean really it is intense there's like it's too many living things in one household so those dogs are sweet though because big dogs like that they're often like the, the sweetest they are sweet. They are. Um, but they're not like also sometimes, you know, the big dogs are like the most lazy, like slow and yeah. lazy. They're not. They are fairly like active. They're not puppies. But I mean, so it's, it's just so much. It's, it's too many living things. So by the time we got home this Sunday, I was like 
you know, I, I was ready to stay away people. So uh, that was that was me. But so speaking of travel, though, Stephanie, uh, it's going to be a little tough going forward. Possibly we have a new variant of COVID-19. I think it's pronounced Omicron. Omicron. Have you? So this is my favorite thing ever. Being somebody that was in a sorority in college, um, listening to all the newscasters pronounce Omicron. Omicron. It's- Omicron. Okay. Yeah. All the different ways that they can is it sounds like a transformer. Like, why did we pick this yeah. particular, <laughs> this particular um, Greek alphabet letter? I'll never understand. But uh, yeah, so new variants, new things, new. What I don't understand is why everybody is talking about like shutting down before we even know whether or not it is worse symptoms or right. if it's mild or do the vaccines work or not? But the fact that everybody was, you know, saying, freaking out and not having any travel, I think is just insane. Yeah, it seems like, I mean, even like some of the more cautious people like in the, you know, scientific community are like, let's slow down. We don't know anything yet. And they're like, it might, it could be months before we really have a sense of what's going on. So I found out about it obviously last week when I was at my my in-laws and my two thoughts were one, I want to know who picks, just like with hurricanes, you know, who picks the <laughs> name? Like, what letter are we going with? Because, you know, at least with the hurricanes, right, they go in like, you know, Greek alphabet order, like alpha, I don't know what it is, after A. Uh, <laughs> in, in great, beta. I, beta, I guess, yeah. I mean, I wanted to say Bravo, but that's military phonetic alphabet, you know, so I know that's different. And then the other thing I thought in my mind, like, do you know the old in sync song, like, here we go, like one more <laughs> time, like, that's literally what popped into my head, because then you're right, you start to have these people all of a sudden clamoring for all the stuff that we just, I feel like, got through again before we even know anything. I mean, the first case literally just happened, I think, yesterday in San Francisco. It's insane. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's going to keep happening. A virus mutates. That's why we have, I think, you know, when I talked to the pediatrician yesterday about just the common cold, I think there's like 300 different varieties Mm -hmm. of the the common cold that, and that's why you get exposed to so many throughout your life. And as you get exposed to them, like it, it, your immune system builds up, but there's always going to be this. It doesn't seem like this is going to go away. Like there's not going to ever be zero COVID cases. Right. Like, that's not going to happen anymore. That's not even a thing that is an option. There's all, it's, it seems like it's always going to be around and it's something that we're going to have to learn to live with. And we can't keep panicking every time a new variant or something is discovered. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's, you know, Fortunately. probably just going to turn into the flu, right? Where it's like the, Hey, you have, this is the year's flu, you know, you, dominant strain of this yeah. year's season. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, it's it's just so crazy to see, you know, and, but then on the same time, I I feel like I saw a lot of people just kind of give this collective shrug, you know, like, oh, of course, like, you know, I, everybody I, just, you know, life is getting back to whatever you want to, I'm, I don't feel like my life got too out of normal to begin with, <laughs> but I think people are going back to their daily lives like they normally would. And we, like I said, we can't just keep shutting down every single time something new pops up with us. Um, yeah especially with the holiday season now, you know, we just came off of Thanksgiving, we're going into, you know, Christmas, New Year's, all that kind of stuff. Like last year, I think a lot of people made different, uh, you know, decisions and changes for the holiday season for, you know, variety of reasons. And I feel like people are like, I'm not doing that again. I want my, I want my big Thanksgiving meal, right? I want my, I want my Christmas with my family. And so I think yeah, it's just like- fair, a- we didn't have a vaccine then. And we also true. didn't have like the treatments available or the knowledge that of how to treat it that we do now. That's true. Yeah. I mean, they're already talking about, uh, um, you know, they're going to soon start having like medications if you do catch it, you know, like it's treat- the therapeutic type of. Yeah. Well, and then also, I mean, you, you know, we talk a lot about like capital, right? Like somebody has political capital. You know, I feel like we went and understandably just to some extent, like so intense the first go around because we didn't know what we were dealing with, right? Like it, there's no capital to do that kind of stuff again, right? You know, people just aren't going to put up with it. And like, I, I don't know if you saw, 
it, I mean, it's just crazy what's going on still in other countries. Like the, the prime minister of New Zealand just was like, you can now use the bathroom in your friend's homes if you're over visiting. It's like, oh my gosh. Like, you know, we talk about government not getting in the bedroom of people. What about the bathroom, right? I mean, government like stopping you, like, no, you cannot go to the bathroom if you're over at a friend's house. Like, it's, that's crazy. It's I, I saw this video of, of a guy um, who saw his mom for the first time in almost two years. Oh my gosh. Because she lived in Australia and yeah. he couldn't travel. And he ha- was unable to go visit her. <clears throat> and finally, they were able to see each other. This is this big emotional reunion. But I'm like, think about that for a second. Like, she literally couldn't leave her country <laughs> because I, she could not travel for I mean, almost two years to see her son. I mean, imagine imagine if your mom and dad or in-laws like lived in Australia. Robert would have been his whole life without seeing his grandparents. Yeah, I mean, that's insane to think about. I feel like I need a whole podcast on this. <laughs> on the topic of like pandemic parenting and how bizarre it is like molly's been more places than robert has and she's four months old yeah because the first you know six seven months of his life we really didn't do anything sure Uh, we really didn't go anywhere um and so when we go the first time i took him to like a target he was like eyes were wide and yeah what's happening where am i who are all these people that's crazy. Yeah, it's so true. I remember, so I had the opportunity to talk with somebody at a, a think tank in London last mm-hmm. year a bit. And it was just insane. You know, there's the old Ron Swanson line, freedom is what makes America great, England okay, and France awful. <laughs> and even there, like, I remember her saying that, you know, for the longest time, they weren't allowed to leave except to like go to a park, yeah. right, or a grocery store. And when they made like the change in June where you could sit down in a park bench, like that was now okay. Like, you know, you can now, cause you could go to the park, but you couldn't sit down anywhere in the park. I mean, it's insane. And, and so now that we have another variant, I'm afraid we're going to start to see, you know, all that stuff come back across the world. And I mean, I, I just can't deal with it. You It'll know? be interesting to see where it goes. But I also think that, you know, what I read from the doctors in South Africa that saw the patients now, that's not a scientific thing, you know, but sure. they said that what they are seeing or what they saw was, were mild cases. Hmm. Well, that's good. And hopefully, hopefully it stays that hopefully way. It stays that way. We just don't know. Um, right. We just don't know. Anybody knows. And so I don't think you can really make a good decision until you really have the facts. That's right. Slow down, take a deep breath, pause, and, and let's, let's figure out what the heck is going on. Cause I don't want it to impact the Christmas season, which right. is now upon us. It's officially Christmas season for all you people who put up your trees three weeks ago. I'm looking at you, Taylor, you know, and me, my favorite season, my Christmas tree is right there. There you go. <laughs> so mine is up now. Chris and I put ours up. We decorated yeah. last night. It's after Thanksgiving. I'm cool with it. So <laughs> what, what, you know, how is your Christmas season starting? Have you done your shopping yet and all that stuff? Yeah. No, I have like half of my Christmas shopping done. Okay. Um, but I have so much more to do. And yeah. and I, I'm worried about like, I, I think I'm going to have to go in person because I'm kind of worried about the shipping times. Yes, for real. I, I'm worried about that too. You definitely can't be last minute, I feel like this year. No. You know? Hold I ordered a piece to our couch, like a piece of like a piece of the couch um, okay. to make it, it's like a sectional and to make it fit better in our living, in our new living room. Um, we ordered a different piece for the couch okay um, because it kind of all you can fit them together in different sections and they told us it will be here in March maybe oh my and that was like a month ago wow so we'll you know I I am worried about like bigger anything that you buy that's bigger or in high demand um so I might have to just like actually physically go out and shop this year which I'm not bad about yeah, I, I think that's a way to kind of get more into the holiday spirit, even though as we record this, it's like 70 degrees here. You know, it's kind of hard to get in the holiday spirit when I'm sweating yeah. in December. It's so weird. I'm like, I could play golf today and, and not even need like a long sleeve shirt. It's so comfortable outside. It's crazy. So what's your favorite part of like, you know, the, the lead up to Christmas? Like what's your favorite thing that you do? Is it putting out the decorations? How, how, what is it for you? Definitely having the house decorated, but then also, um, I think just all of the things that you do with your family and friends, like little events or, or dinners, 
um, watching Christmas movies, kind of all of those little things that you do in the lead up to it. Okay. So for me, it's also the Christmas movies <laughs> it is all the things I want to watch, you know, uh, for me, it's like What's your favorite Christmas movie. Oh man. I, I really, I really like to Muppets Christmas Carol, which is okay. a really good movie. Okay. It's a good Christmas. So I, I'm fine with watching one of the really old, old Christmas Carol ones too, but I, I just like the Muppets one. Yeah. And I also like Christmas Vacation. Speaking of the Griswolds you talked about earlier, it's just, it's, it makes me laugh. I've already watched Christmas. I've already watched like four Christmas movies. So Christmas Vacation is one of my top ones. Um, four Christmases. Have you ever seen that? Yes. Yeah. That's a good one. Wow. It is hilarious. I love Vince Vaughn and that movie is so funny. Well, he's a perfect person, you know, the Vince Vaughn just like talk really fast and, you know, yeah. go through all those scenarios. So yeah, he's the perfect for that movie. That's a good one. Um, my family always, my like my dad is really big on like all the old, old cartoons, yeah. with, like Rudolph and mm-hmm. Burger Meister, Meister Burger. So like one year we found this like DVD collection that <laughs> has all of them on one. So he'll just watch that. Normally, when we get together as a family, we'll watch uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, yeah, that's a classic. It's a classic one. It's super long, though. It's and very it's, also, it's also very anti-capitalism, which I have my own, <laughs> like, beef with. But that's... that's never really thing. thought about it that deeply. <laughs> but. I'm telling you, if you think, if you look at it, it's, 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 it's like the Lego movie where, like, oh, the capitalist is the bad person. The bad guy in there in the... In that movie? Yeah, Mr. Uh, it's not Potter, right? Is it Mr. Potter? It's Potter. It's Potter. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Potter, yes. Um, yeah. uh, that's right, it's Potter and Bailey. I never really thought about it that he was like the, the capitalist. In yeah, that. see, think about it. It's got these like bad anti-capitalist notions, but then it's also, and I'm going to super geek out for like 30 seconds here. It's also a great example of like, fractional reserve banking and why like oh my god you're kind of off your i'm just saying i'm just saying if you think about it like the whole if bank anybody run, wants to hear about <laughs> fractional reserve banking i'm not ex- contact ron separately <laughs> i'm not explaining it i'm not getting i'm just saying it's a great example the whole run on the bank and like well i don't have your money in the vault it's in his house and all this kind of stuff and that's why we have like bail bank bailouts and all that kind of stuff. It, it illustrates it perfectly folks i'm just saying <laughs> back around to cryptocurrency in some way i mean i could go there but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna (laughs) i I won't do that to you stephanie so i I mean that's my is the movie thing and then i also like the decorations my thing is not the tree i love the christmas village i'm a huge like you know the christmas village building pieces you know yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mine I, i always like to set that up uh, Kristen always yells at me because I want to buy another piece when <laughs> we don't have the space to add more buildings to the Christmas village. And so yeah. I've, been, I've been lobbying for our village needs to create like a suburb in another room because we're running <laughs> room, you know, so that's my favorite piece, but. Well, I don't know if you can see either, but like half of our tree at the bottom doesn't have any ornaments on it anymore. Oh, Robert oh. has. <laughs> <laughs> he he got really into decorating and undecorating the tree so he was uh it was every day every morning he would come down and take the ornaments off and put them back on because we got the shatter we only put the ones that can't break at the bottom sure. um but we just decided like we're gonna go ahead and move them up the tree so that it proof, looks proof. Like, you know half the tree is decorated and the other half is just it's just a tree with lights it's fun. I I never thought about that. I'm going to be so unprepared to be a parent for all the <laughs> that I never would think of is child proofing your Christmas tree. It's strange, yes. So and speaking of our Christmas lights too, which we were really excited about outside. Okay, so I try and avoid that as much as possible. And I've been lucking out in that there are no external um, outlets on our house. Oh. And I can't, I just can't. And so that's why I want to resign the lease here. So I don't have to worry about it too. So, <laughs> so that works out, but you know, you were talking about shortages. I don't know. I, I shared with you a link about how there's like possibly talking about shortages, a shortages of Santa's possibly this Christmas season. It's In what crazy. context? <laughs> but, you know, the, the people like obviously who play Santa in a mall. Oh, like the human being Santa. Yes. The human <laughs> being Santa's there's going to be a shortage. Santas or... No, no, no. The human being Santa. So I, 
I love, the, apparently there is like a whole website. The free market is amazing. It'll fill any need of <laughs> where you can like reserve a Santa for like your show or your like gathering or, you know, the mall. And apparently there's a shortage of Santas this year. So the supply chain is messing everything up. Well, yeah. inflation, I bet the, the cost of those Santas is going to go up too now that there's a shortage. <laughs> well, yeah, they've been talking about like, are there people who normally play Santa, you know, afraid of, of COVID or, you know, in gatherings? Maybe it's because, yeah, they got out of the business last year because they probably wouldn't. And so now that, you know, things are more back to normal this holiday season compared to last one. There's all this pent up demand for Santas. I don't know. It's going to be interesting, interesting to see what happens. I've been trying to take, so we didn't get to do Santa last year because of COVID. Right. <laughs> and so Robert's never done the like sit on Santa's lap. So I've been trying to find events that aren't at the mall that have the Santa speaking sure. of. Um, so we went to Christmas at the Capitol and we missed the Santa by like five minutes. Like oh, he, no. he left before we could get a picture with Robert on his lap. And so I was like, oh crap. So now I'm, I'm trying to think of another place where there might be a Santa bef- instead of having to go to Green Hills Mall. Yeah. Which, you know, no offense, Green Hills Mall is great, but that is like a lot of people. There's a oh. lot going on. A lot of things might be overwhelming for, you know, Robert I, and Molly. I wonder if the state's, the Santa that the state uses is like how legit is that Santa right I don't want one where it's like a clear fake beard I want like a real beard you know right so (laughs) we missed that Santa I'm trying to find another event that might be smaller where there's another Santa so if you see one send it my way all right you hear it here folks you know (laughs) you know let Stephanie know so that way she can take Robert and get that picture so speaking of Santa and the naughty and license list Chris Cuomo got put on the naughty list the the other day and is now officially suspended from CNN. Okay, so Chris is the brother that was the anchor for CNN. Okay. Correct. Yes. So when they say that they indefinitely suspended him, is that like he's fired or like they're taking a time out to see what happened? I don't know. I mean, here's here's the thing. So if you if you haven't followed this. Right. Obviously. So his brother, Andrew Cuomo, former governor of New York, you know, obviously gotten somewhat trouble for killing senior citizens, but then got in a lot of trouble for sexually assaulting some women. Well, he didn't kill the senior citizens. (laughs) COVID killed them. He covered them up. He led the policy. Yes. (laughs) Right. He covered up the deaths of senior citizens. But Correct. then had this whole firestorm around getting caught um, sexually assaulting some women on his staff and, and whatnot. And so his brother, who is, uh, I don't know if you can say anybody at CNN is well known because I don't know who watches CNN, but he, one of the burn, you like that burn? The, you know, there, he, it came up, it came out that he was advising his brother, right, on like the PR as, you know, um, as that s- scandal unfolded, well, you know, it's, it's certainly weird, but I think CNN was understanding like, hey, this, it's a weird dynamic, you know, it is your brother, family, all that kind of stuff. And so they didn't really suspend him because he was like, I didn't give him, like, I didn't do any, I just kind of gave him some big picture advice, right, is basically what he was saying. Well, it turns out that's not true. <laughs> and the state AG basically uncovered or, or, or released info that basically was like, not only was he just giving his brother advice, he was using his like contacts and knowledge in the media to try and like dig up dirt on his brother's accusers. Yeah. And, and see, that's where like, I think people's distress for the media really comes from in some ways. Uh, But this is one where I feel like I blame CNN for this because they, they let him kind of like promote his, like before all of this happened, before all these news stories broke, I remember seeing all the time that the governor was like almost on daily on the show talking about his COVID response. And like, they really let him play that up and have that relationship with his brother before this happened. And so I feel like you can't really then turn around when something scandalous happens and be like, oh no, 
you're supposed to have a separation between, you know, being uh, an anchor and your, your family. Right. When in all actuality, I think that his brother was doing a very PRE type of thing before this, promoting his brother as governor because he had aspirations for a higher office beyond the governor of New York. Um, yeah. He was writing a book about his COVID response. He was definitely trying to get on the national scene. And so I don't think that, like, I guess, I guess I look at it as like, you can't have it both ways. And so I blame CNN for letting them have this type of relationship to begin with where they're, where he was promoting him, because why would you not think that that's okay to then, I mean, not dig up dirt on somebody's accuser, but why would you not think it's okay to then help your brother on the flip side of it um, when something happens? And so <clears throat> I really blame CNN. They, they, they're the ones that kind of put this in in motion um, and then for them to stand back and be like, oh no, we our hands are clean. We just, we didn't know he was doing this. Yeah, well you let him like kind of have an inappropriate type of relationship um, on camera promoting his brother and family before this. Well, and it, and it's clear that they leveraged that relationship too, right? They, they wanted access exactly. to the governorship and to have him on their show whenever they wanted to. But I mean, I just remember, I mean, every single day, one state's governor being on a national right. um, uh, show, like every day talking about their COVID numbers and what's happening. And I know it's New York state, but um, it was, it was very one-sided and definitely sugarcoating like their response. And then, like you said, comes to find out like their response wasn't that great to begin with. And they had more deaths in their nursing homes and a lot of other states and they tried to cover it up. And, and so I, I just blame like they need to have clear separation and they either have policies and ethics in place for journalism or they don't and they can't have it both ways. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, you're right. He was the golden boy essentially on national TV basically every day. It was. And, and then, you know, the thing that I is like, what kind of investigation did CNN do when it first came out? Like, did they really sit Chris down and be like, be honest with us? What were you doing? The one thing I will say is in the bit that I was reading about it was even like a lot of journalists that lean left were like this, like this is unethical in every sense, right? So I think there was like this big, like it was pretty uniform, like what it now that we know the full extent, he's he would be fired in any other situation or capacity, you know. I'm just, I, like you pointed out, I'm really curious to see, is this going to be like a timeout thing where he goes away for three to four months and then comes back or is he going to be gone? You know, I, well, I, I just, I struggle with, like I said, like, how can you blame him? I guess it's his brother. Like, of course, you're going to try to help your family. Not when they do things like that, but like you right. should have refused yourself from it and said like, I can't be unbiased. And so I can't, I can't be the one reporting on the story. I can't be the one doing this and just completely firewalled yourself off from it. That right. would have been the correct ethical thing to do, right. but they didn't do that on the other side when he was talking about his COVID response and everything else that was going on. And so right. I think, I think it more, it's more of a CNN policy than it is anything else. Um, point. Yeah. I think I, I hadn't thought about it from that side too. So I, I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see. And I think you're, the biggest point is you hit the nail on the head of, you know, people wonder why we don't trust the media. Well, this is another example, 2,345, right, of why a lot of people have a lot of distrust for the mainstream big national news outlets, you know? I yeah, mean, you have to really find, you know, I have different media outlets that I look at every day and, and I trust that their reporting is, you know, semi-fair and um, mm -hmm. and I think you just have to find those places that work for you that, that you can trust and, and get your news from. That's true. Well, reporters, I think have good intentions. Oh, uh, I, I that might be controversial for me to say, <laughs> <laughs> but I do believe that most reporters have, have, uh, good intentions. I agree with you. I agree. It, it sometimes I think it's the corporate decisions of the big national media, right? Or it's like the pundits that are played as reporters. Like those aren't real reporters. Those are pundits, right. uh, but people think of, or put them in the box of reporters. When I think of reporter, I'm thinking of like newspaper reporter, a reporter that, you know, is on the ground at a local, I, I think of more local. Absolutely. Reporters. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. All right, so in wrapping this up, we've got a lot of stuff going on at Beacon. 
if you haven't seen, we just released a thing about property taxes. Um, uh, spoiler alert, uh, there's problems with property taxes. So if you haven't <laughs> seen that out, check it out. And then we got something big coming up here pretty soon. Uh, Stephanie, you want to tease what we're releasing in a, in a week or so, week or so here? Um, what the are pork report? Oh, the pork report. Yeah, That's the, the biggest publication that we have every year. Um, super exciting. Um, it's it's actually a fun like Christmas theme uh, type of type of report this year. So um, check it out. It, it comes out December eleventh. I think you're right. I think I think you're right on that date. That sounds that sounds yeah. right to me around December 11th. Yeah. So uh, coming out soon. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so out. yeah, lots going on. Be sure to be following us here on whatever your social is, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, luckily, I'm not running that. So you're more likely to see it. <laughs> if you don't want me running, Taylor will be pushing that stuff out. But uh, thanks for tuning in to this week's decaf. Stephanie, it's been a lot of fun. And I think uh, we're going to have to lobby to make this a regular thing. I don't know about yeah, you. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, That's thanks great. so much, guys. And we'll check you out next week.